Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 315, featuring a review of a game that came out just two weeks ago. A game called The Dwarf Run. Now this is a adventure slash RPG hybrid uh, that I really think is a funny, witty, and very charming uh, take on the genre. Uh, and it's a one-man band labor of love, at least as far as I've been able to tell. Anyway, there's a lot to uh, say about it, so without further ado, here is The Dwarf Run. And here we go with a little game called The Dwarf Run, an old-fashioned role-playing adventure. This is a, pretty much as far as I can tell, a one-man band production. One, uh, let's see, Alexander Murds Valley, Murds Valley, developer and publisher. And that's about all I know about him. I'd like to get him on the show, though, because I'm really intrigued by this, uh, this game, as you'll see. Uh, this came out on October 21st, 2015, just a couple of weeks ago. And it really caught my eye because I really like dwarves. <laughs> I really like the idea of an old-fashioned role-playing adventure. I mean, what's not to like about a dwarf, right? I mean, these guys, they, they like their axes, their hammers, their beards, and copious amounts of fine ale. I <laughs> ask again, what's not to like? Something else likable about this game, it's only $8.99 on Steam right now. Uh, real cheap, really good value. I just don't see how you can go wrong with that. But if you're not convinced, uh, just watch the video and you can make up your mind, mind about it. But I really enjoy this game and I wanted to uh, bring some attention to it. Now it is an indie product. Uh, thankfully it's not one of those uh, RPG maker Final Fantasy wannabe uh, type games that seem to be a dime a dozen nowadays. Uh, this one I would compare it, I'd put it more on a level of say uh, Jay Barnson's Frayed Knights. It's kind of got that kind of vibe to it, kind of humor, uh, though this one's more focused on adventure. Lots of uh, adventure game type puzzles that we'll, I'll show you some of those in a minute. And, and by the way, folks, as it, since it does have those adventure game features, it's a very hard to cover a game like that because you inevitably give away some of the puzzles. I'll try not to give away anything that would be, I think would really impact your experience, but you know, if you are, if you want to have a 100% clean experience, and not have any uh, spoilers, you might just want to go ahead and buy the game. <laughs> not watch this video. Uh, but otherwise, I think it'll be fine. Another thing that's kind of like Frayed Knights, uh, this one has pre-made characters. Uh, you get four characters, and they're pretty well thought out. You got this human wizard, Barbados. There's that elf called Ionor. And then you have the main character, Delane, and his dad, Zinn. And a lot of the fun of the game comes from the funny banter... Uh, among the characters. They have kind of clash at times, but they generally seem to work pretty well together. Now, one negative I'll say is, is it's a pretty uh, homogenous bunch here, pretty much uh, white guys, you know, if you will. I realize it. <laughs> There's two dwarves and an elf in there, but uh, no female characters, and you know, it might have been nice to have a little bit more diversity uh, in the mix, at least have a female character, but uh, it is what it is, and that may or may not bother you. All right, let's go ahead and get the game officially started. One nice thing, the loading times are really quick. I never had to wait around for the thing to load. Something I always appreciate about a game. And let's see, a prologue. A funny thing happened on the way. Well, maybe I should break out the old voice acting skills once again. Delane, looks like we're on the right track. The landmark. Yeah. Press any key to continue. HIT IT! But doesn't that add so much, so much value? Barbados! Do you read runes? Try me! What about this one? Hmm... Well... Tell me again what the map says about it. It says, then follow the path According to the whole stone. Hmm. Don't torture your memory, my friend. This is not a rune. But. Take a look over there. Hmm. 
This is not a room. It's just an icon. The cannon and the road. I think we make a perfect team. Time to go underground. What's that? Whatever it is, it is definitely not of magical origin. Neither is it divine or demonic intervention. Nor a manifestation of nature's forces. One more reason to get underground as soon as we can. Tickles! My horn skull cap! My helm speed! My agabooba! My feet! Why feet? Try to move them. My feet! And I think that'll do it for the <laughs> Matt Barton's voice acting session for this game. All right, let's actually get into the damn thing. See what this is all about. All right, so the first thing we've got to do is learn a little bit about the interface. It's not really difficult. We can hold the tab key down to see what we can interact with. We just click on the screen to go where we want Delane to go, and the others will follow along behind him. Now one thing I don't especially like is the camera controls. You got this what they call a cinematic sort of automatic camera angle. Uh, you can try to adjust it by hand but it's just not quite as uh, intuitive. It doesn't seem to have the same sort of mechanics as most uh, games of this type so that could take a little fiddling. The very first part of the game feels a lot more like an adventure game than a role-playing game. You can probably figure out here pretty quickly that you need to find a way into that shed and get that crate open. Question is, how? And like any good old adventure game, uh, the obvious solutions seldom work. And the resulting solution probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense to anybody but the game designer. But that's uh, all par for the course with the adventure game genre. It's a transmuter torch. So a little bit of riffing on the uh, nature of the role-playing game worlds, I suppose. Some jokes here about these torches that seem to go on forever. <laughs> Actually, I propose a, a quasi-scientific, uh, anyway, some kind of rational explanation for that endless torch phenomenon. That's pretty cool. We can listen to the door. I hear rattling and clanging, <laughs> and the smell. <laughs> you know, whenever you play this game, I bet you're probably going to imagine that southern accent whenever you see Ionor. <laughs> I haven't ruined the game for anybody. Okay, got ourselves a new quest. Open the wooden door. The quest of the champions. Uh, another bit of tedium. We need to pick up all of these little stones. Uh... Probably not what you paid $8.99 for the pleasure of doing, but we need to pick them all up. <laughs> Believe me, every pebble will be of immense value, especially once we get our mage equipped with his sling. I'm just going to go ahead and spoil a few little things like that. I don't know why you would care to how that would be a negative factor in your experience of the game, but... Now you notice we have stone, stone, stone. Now we got a rock. A rock. And that's the kind of classic, almost Sierra style, uh, puzzle style coming into play there. Even though you think a stone and a rock, basically the same thing, right? Well, you'd be wrong. Because only the A rock will get us through the door in one of the most circuit and uh, frankly weird solutions. And it's a bit alarming that they had put something that poorly done right at the beginning because uh, most of the other puzzles are fairly clever, if not even uh, ingenious. Uh, this one, not so much. 
I'm just trying to make sure I got all those rocks. You notice too, you can equip the rocks as weapons, and that will prove essential here in a second. All right, what are we dealing with here? The colony. I advise you to show respect to a fellow multicellular formation. <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. Uh, this big talking sponge, telepathic sponge thing. Pretty cool. And there is a kind of like back in the old Might and Magic games and the Ultima games will be a... It's not just fantasy. There's also a science fiction component that we'll get into uh, much later in the game. But it's, I kind of like that aspect of it. Apparently all these guys are engrossed by this colony. And several of these colonies all around. It is kind of neat to think of... Uh, you ever thought about what we would, must look like to the animals <laughs> or like if an alien race how weird you know they would be looking at us as though we were the tentacle horrors from the deeps so to speak speaking of which find a copy of an extended history of time and i will help you with a treasure okay so now we're back to the age-old problem of getting that door open uh, let's try to use the plank Right? You think that would work, right? Well, okay. Plank in the door. Push the plank in the door. It still won't budge, damn it. <laughs> Not enough strength? Not enough momentum. Not enough momentum. So you'd think that would mean maybe you have to get this guy running and lunge at it, but no. You have to use the A-Rock. <laughs> and here we go. Our first fight. And what a fight it is. Rustless body, you will pay for this, for my suffering, for every second of 300 years. Why? <laughs> because there's no one else around. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good rationale for Mortal Kombat. Okay, so we can see 70% chance of making contact. Not bad, I suppose. This guy also has a 70% chance. Of course, these rocks aren't going to be doing a whole lot of damage. My wizard can't cast any spells yet because he's going to need a rod, sort of a magic staff. Of course, my elf doesn't have his bow and arrows yet, and nobody's got any armor. So this will probably not go too well. It's like I'm having some frame rate issues. I can't tell if it's my video editor or the footage I got or what, but I didn't have any problems playing the game. And everybody's getting their whacks in with this rock except for that elf. And I came to hate that elf. Which may be why I gave him such a uh, appropriate accent. I mean, the guy dies left and right. It's just a miracle if you can keep him alive through the battle. He didn't even get to land a blow that time. And as you can see there, you get experience points based on the amount of damage that you do. So you get a couple even if the guy dies before he even lands a blow, but not nearly as much as he would otherwise. So and that's another problem. You can fall behind and get even suckier compared to the rest of the team so one of those poor get poorer and the rich get richer situations now I finally have some equipment and these guys can't wear a whole lot of stuff just the basics uh, but it, it, I kind of like the way they have this set up you just click on them and you can pull their items over there it would have been nice to have a sort of an at a glance system for seeing if it's an upgrade or not but there's so little equipment that you'll find it's really not much of an issue uh, again, I don't I haven't played this game all the way through, so things might liven up, but I'm probably a good uh, 20, maybe 25 hours in, and I'm definitely not having a problem with uh, too much equipment. And now the leveling, you really need to spend some time with this and be very careful. You get very few of these points, as you can see, only two uh, per turn or two per level, and you don't level up that often. And the, each point can make a huge difference. You know, it seems like the monsters all have a lot better attributes than you. Uh, speed, this is going to be very important for every character. It takes uh, three action points to attack. So you could imagine if you had six, that would be two attacks, not counting the, the uh, points you'd have to waste getting to, into position. Uh, intelligence gives you experience points, you know, in addition to uh, other benefits. So that's important. Constitution, obviously, you don't get hit points automatically for leveling so you have to pump up the constitution uh, again that's vital <laughs> strength if you want to do any damage is vital dexterity if you have low dexterity you will miss every time with melee or ranged so basically what we're looking at is every stat is vital and you only get two per level so 
It really feels to me like you should get three, but that's just me. As you can see, as you get them higher, they start to cost more points to raise it. So that, that could use some work. Uh, now these perk points are kind of interesting. Uh, some of them are useless. You know, I guess unless you're running away a lot, you probably don't want to put a point in to remain vigilant. Mind the Sponge is another one of those experience point boosters. Probably good for everybody. Uh, go for the eyes. Uh, sounds like a Baldur's Gate reference to me. And that's your crit. But it only gives you 1%. So you'd have to pump that up an awful lot to see much of a difference. Uh, to me, this Threshold the Pain seems to be the best perk. Uh, if you take any damage, you'll start to get some uh, penalties to your accuracy. And believe me, you do not want a penalty uh, to your accuracy. These guys miss, and they miss, and they miss. The uh, last thing you want is something to actually increase that problem. Uh, I don't know what this guy's uh, fixation is with, with missing. I mean, one of the first weapons you get for the cleric actually penalizes you further, makes it harder to hit, and he was already missing left and right. <laughs> uh, expect to miss a lot. Uh, let's see. So for clerics, you know, again, they need everything. Uh, I guess kind of hard. To, you just have to kind of prioritize, I suppose. Uh, most of the special abilities will also uh, rely on some stats, so you probably don't want to have every kind of uh, special ability pumped up. Let's see. He obviously needs dexterity. Another problem, though, with this archer, you know, you can pump up the dexterity and he will be great for hitting things. He's one of the few that can actually hit and do damage on a consistent basis with that. Uh, the only downside is you'll run out of arrows very quickly, and it's very hard to get more. And there's a finite supply in the game, so, you know, pretty soon he'll be relying on melee weapons. And if you put all the stuff into dexterity and he has no strength, well... Uh, you get the picture. Uh, the wizard's pretty one of the more most useful characters, especially after he gets his, uh, of course, after he gets his staff. Uh, he can throw out those uh, magic missiles, or I think they call them sparks in this game. That's very, again, you, you're going to rely very heavily on that because it's one of the few things that will never miss. And all the other attacks are missing and missing and missing. So uh, anything that has a never miss component will be priceless. You can also summon some things. I'll show you my later party uh, when we're done here. Just uh, using my pickaxe on these boulders, because again, we need all the ammunition we can get. And here we go with another battle. I think we'll play through this, and then I'll show you my other party. The Hydrazine Head! Looks like we've got ourselves three servings of brain steak. <laughs> Let's assume we can consider two Dwarven Cerebrums as one brain. Ouch! <laughs> two arms! Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. These, these dwarves take some uh, some picking. They, pick, they get picked on. All right, so what you can do is wait, and that'll let the zombies slowly amble into position, and we can uh, see where they end up before we... so we won't waste our action points getting into position. Now, I, I could try to cast a spell, but you can see there, no staff, so that'll come a little bit later. So for now, he's pretty much just hitting people with rocks. I would advise you to equip it as a melee weapon rather than throw the rocks. Because again, you don't want to run out of rocks too soon. I can sort of understand uh, running out of arrows, but rocks? I mean, we're, we're in a cave, aren't we? But, uh, okay, anyway, looking at his character sheet there. I don't see anything I can really leverage in terms of uh, weaknesses. Alright. At least they don't have a lot of hit points. I got this set to casual difficulty. It defaults, I believe, to challenging, but man, if you put it on there, you'll be redoing these battles three or four times until you get you know luck out with some good rolls. Now that said, I did notice in one of the updates he said he's uh, adjusted the balance a bit, so that might not be an issue anymore. But I'm just going to keep it on the casual, because I got really frustrated. Now, you'd think a ranged weapon, you could be really far back and not have any issues. But actually, you need to be pretty close. Not point-blank range, obviously. I think you actually get penalized for that. But you have to be a lot closer than you would like. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, see, he's doing well already. He's hitting his targets. If I can just keep anything from going over there and messing with him. We might actually get through this alive, which would be nice to have him actually survive a battle. 
One thing I do appreciate is uh, the battles tend to go pretty quickly once everything gets into position. There's no lengthy uh, animations you have to watch over and over again. So moves out a pretty nice clip, which you'll really appreciate, especially once you get into some of the longer battles. Uh, it would be nice if all the monsters would just move on the same turn, but uh, I guess he didn't want to do it that way. And there we go. Wow, look at that. He even recovered two of his arrows. Another cool thing about this game is that you can click on the map, and if you've already been to an area, you can just click on it and instantly go there, which is really cool. I wish more games would do that sort of thing. <laughs> you know, Barbados here, he's got bad breath, apparently, so they're always picking on him for his bad breath. And he needs some kind of magical stick to be able to channel magic, so... so I think I'll leave these guys here for now and show you some of the later game. This is about five, maybe six hours in, and I'm confronted with these demonic statues, and I have to figure out which one goes with which of my books and make a little offering and summon the demon and then dispatch said demon. But this was a really funny uh, scenario here I wanted to share with you. <laughs> Oh, girl, <laughs> a handsome elderly gentleman. <laughs> Did a great job on this whole uh, segment here. Good old Zen. Watch this. <laughs> uh, I think we've all been there, huh? <laughs> oh, man. Father. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got to uh, uh, fight our own dad. Hit for stun. Now, this is a pretty fun battle. And uh, now my guys have gotten fairly decent equipment. And my wizard has plenty of spells. So even without having that cleric available, we might be able to survive. Uh, just making sure I don't have any arrows left. Uh, sadly, he is out of arrows. You know, I told you about that earlier, so he'll just have to use his spear. It looks like he can't equip that item. Okay. Let them come to me. And what the heck. <laughs> Run on in there. <laughs> Let's go ahead and summon a skeleton. And the more we pump up that summon, the and intelligence, you get a better weapon on your skeleton. That's pretty cool. Not a whole bunch of different spells, but there's definitely enough moving parts here that it must have been a real challenge to make sure that uh, the features didn't break the game. Get these guys into position, and then I think we can start walloping on them. One nice thing about the elf, uh, he tends to die a lot, but he's also pretty good with hitting his enemies. The poor old warrior there, I'll probably need to adjust him a little bit. Uh, you can, by the way, reset your stats and attributes at any point. There's an option called Cheat. <laughs> uh, it doesn't penalize you for doing it as far as I can tell. So if you want to experiment, play around with it, I guess that's cool. I guess you have the stigma of having to cheat, quote unquote. Even though it is built into the game, so <laughs> it's kind of a weird understanding of what it means to cheat. Uh, he's got that flame flame effect going on the skeleton, so he's going to be taking damage over time. Now that can get quite nasty, but it looks like I might actually win this battle. Love that wizard. That wizard spark option has saved my party more than once. Really great spell. You want to get as many <laughs> points into that as possible. Yeah, and just looking back at the screen here, at the detail on the, on the graphics, the artwork... Uh, the music, the uh, animations, this, this looks like a lot more expensive of a game than, you know, eight eight dollar game, you know. Definitely looks good and plays well too. You know, the interface could do with a few little touch-ups, but all in all, it's, it's more than serviceable. One thing I would have really liked to have had was a, a hex option. You know, put some hexes down on the ground so you can see exactly how far the people are apart from each other. You can sort of eyeball it, but can get a little awkward. It can get really tough sometimes in these battles. I don't know if you could tell, but I've kind of got a weird camera angle going there. And uh, I can't find a good way to 
you know, move or move the camera so I can get a better perspective on this. You can put it behind the shoulders if you like, but that doesn't really help. There we go. I've got some gold coins. I've yet to find a use for the coins. I don't know if there's a store at some point. <laughs> Zen, are you all right? I'm pretty far from all right. <laughs> that stone block. Stone block. And the ceiling. Oh, I get it. <laughs> All right, so I'll leave you with one of my favorite parts of the game. What could it be? What could it be? <laughs> so <laughs> look at these big giant rats that just crying out for punishment. Gonna love it when you get to kill rats. Actually, these rats are normal size. It's actually our guys that have shrunk really small, but it's all relative and it's get to whack some rats i mean who, who would love this look at the detail on the i mean isn't that isn't this what video games are all about i mean like the little tails are just wagging and just, uh, just oof. i wish i was there i wish i could get inside this game and just you know be a wizard and cast a spark and just <laughs> right at a rat it's just a shame that it takes so long to get to this battle with, with the rats. You know, it would be nicer if you got to fight these guys right away, just to set that proper tone. Nothing I hate more is one of those pretentious RPGs. It's like, oh, rats are so cliche. Players don't want to kill rats. I mean, we're aspiring for a higher art form. Yeah, blow it out, your rat ass. Just give me some rats. Give me an axe. Give me some ale. Well, let's see. Let's start with the ale, then give me an axe, and then give me... There we go. I am in heaven! This is what I pay for. This is $8.99, well spent, right here. Look at that. Look at that giant hammer. That is a rat... Oh, It's like I can almost feel that. It's like almost visceral quality to this rat, uh, rat humping. Let's see, force field, go ahead and get a little shield in case that rat gets any ideas. <laughs> Got the skeleton involved. Let's see, come on. Oh, that rat's got a lot of health. What has he got, like 100 hit points? Oh my god. They really wanted to drag this out. Get the. They wanted to get the full enjoyment of the, the full experience. They don't want it to be over too soon. You know, you just take your time with this. Let's see if I can get him back and... Shoot some arrows into this thing. Looks like I've already lost my cleric. <laughs> he didn't last very long. I guess he was just overcome. Maybe he hasn't recovered from that lost demon. Yeah, looks like I'm gonna win. It'll be a little close though. Come on, get the wizard in there. Get in on this wizard. Come on. Everybody whack the rat. Whack a whack a rat. Man, that's that, that's probably the name of my RP. If I ever get it around to doing one, I think I'll call it just uh, Whack a Rat. <laughs> and rat! Whacked! Boo! 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 Yo! Alright, I'm done. I'm happy. I got to kill some rats. I'll see you guys later. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week with an interview with Johnny Wood, a developer who has brought the classic Ultima games online in a new uh, format that's very interesting, and I know you guys want to hear more about it, so uh, stay tuned. As always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you very much for your support of me and Matt Chat. It uh, really means a lot to me, guys. You have uh, no idea uh, how much it means to me. Uh, actually, I wanted to... Uh, welcome in two new patrons, uh, Sean Spaulding and Darren Venaria. Maybe that's Venaria, I'm not sure. But in either case, thank you guys very much for uh, joining the ranks. And remember, if you would like to step up to the plate, uh, just go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon site. All I ask is a dollar. If you want to pitch in uh, two dollars or more, uh, that's, e that's even better because you can cover for people that would really like to support the show but simply can't. Uh, due to financial realities, so, so to speak. So uh, thanks to everyone who has supported me in any capacity, including uh, t just telling somebody about it, uh, the show on Twitter or Facebook or anything like that. I'm a very grateful guy, so thank you. Thank you.
All right, gratitude <laughs> aside, what about that news from the Matt Cave? Okay, so a couple of items here. Uh, one is, let me start with the good news. So, uh, the Bardstown Kickstarter, Bardstown, what am I saying? The Battletech Kickstarter <laughs> uh, was successful, of course. They raised $2.8 million, and that allowed them to hit all four of their funding stages. So, I know a lot of you guys were among those uh, uh, supporters. So, and uh, I'm sure they appreciate your, your support. And I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I mean, that was, I mean, did you like Jordan Weissman? I mean, he's a really great, really great guest. I want to get him back on the show and to talk about Shadowrun when the dust settles, so to speak. Uh, also, a, a longtime supporter of the show, Stig Johansson, has published his first book, uh, this, or adventure setting, no, well, book, adventure setting, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's a lore-heavy, uh, what you call it, adventure for the world of Ark. It's called Midnight in Mog. And Stig is a real-life Norseman, <laughs> which may or may not have had something to do with uh, Ed Greenwood uh, calling this a must-have title. So I know a lot of you guys are into this stuff, so I'll post a link to this uh, book in the show notes so you can go check it out. You know, and then even if you don't, you know, uh, I'm sure Stig would like to be, I'd like to hear from you about it. Okay, what else do we have here? Uh, this is the bad news. Uh, so Blizzard will apparently no longer be reporting the number of World of Warcraft subscribers that they have. Uh, they're down now to 5.5 million, which I think is the lowest point in something like nine years. So it's pretty alarming for those of us who like uh, World of Warcraft. And I realize, you know, 5.5 million, they're still really making a lot of money with this. But, you know, considering I think it, at one point it was maybe 12 million. Uh, so that's uh, quite a decline. I don't know what it means for the future of... Uh, World of Warcraft and MMORPGs in general, but it's uh, quite frankly uh, not something I was happy to read about. And I don't like the idea of them uh, not reporting it. You know, it's, it's like a kind of a, I don't know what to call it. Uh, you know, it's not transparency anymore, right? So I'm not, not, not too fond of that. All right. Well, speaking of things I am fond of, what about that ale of the week? So this week I have a little number called the 24 Karat Golden Ale. I kid you not, this is a carrot cake inspired Belgian style ale from Stone. And this is a, the winner of their competition. I guess they have a homebrew competition every year. Uh, this is the seventh one. And they had uh, their first ever female winner, uh, Julie, Gold, Julie, Julie or July Goldenberg uh, submitted this one. Uh, she added carrots, raisins, cinnamon, and more to a, a Belgian-style golden strong ale to create a beer that is the liquid embodiment of carrot cake. Now, I've had a lot of pumpkin brews. I love those. I've never had a carrot one, so I was very intrigued by this concept. I wanted to give this uh, a try. And, it's, uh, you know, I'm really happy uh, that I, saw, I found this one. So let's see what else is here. 8.5% alcohol by volume. Uh, carrots, cinnamons, raisins, and vanilla beans. So, Sounds interesting to me, so let's get it open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this 24 karat golden ale here in this rather excellent drinking horn. Oh, that just, that smells amazing. Man, if this tastes even anywhere close to as good as it smells, this, would, this is going to be five horns easily this you get a really wonderful that really a uh, belgian honey uh sort of honey maybe a little bit of what is that vanilla i'm not really smelling carrots or carrot cake it just smells like a really really good belgian ale this smells amazing uh, so anyway well, let's give it a taste Man, this is good. <laughs> yeah, this is a, wow. Man, this is probably one of the best ales I think I've ever had. I mean, it is just astronomical. 
I get a really good uh, Belgian flavor going down. Uh, I'm not really tasting the carrots. I was kind of expecting kind of a cheesy carrot cake uh, infused of flavor here. Not really tasting that at all. Just a really sweet Belgian ale. You get that sort of cloves and cinnamon flavors in there. A little bit of a, uh, what is that? I guess there is a little bit of a, an odd taste that might be the carrot uh, influence, but it tastes really, really good. Try it one more time here. Yeah, just a really good flavor on this. Uh, not bitter at all. Uh, really sweet, really smooth, a nice uh, creamy texture to this. I'm really enjoying this. I, I, <laughs> in case you can't tell, duh, this is five out of five drinking horns on this. Wow, if you can get a hold of this uh, 24 karat golden ale, uh, highly, highly recommend this. My God, might have to go back and get a couple more of these uh, bottles. Excellent, excellent stuff. All right, so let's wrap this up with a quotation. And I was uh, looking for quotes about rats, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> you probably do believe it. Uh, and this was one, I, this, this is an awesome quote, from uh, W.C. Fields. It goes something like this. The clever cat eats cheese and then breathes down the rat holes with bated breath. <laughs> See you guys next week. One bright morning in the middle of the night, two dead boys got up to fight. Back to back, they faced each other, pulled their swords, and shot each other. A deaf policeman heard the noise, got up and shot those two dead boys. And if you don't believe my lie is true, go ask the one.